I'm going to live the way he wants me to live. I'm going to give until there's just no more to give. I'm going to love, love till there's just no more love. I could never, never have loved the Lord. There have been times when giving and loving brought pain, and I promised I would never let it happen again. But I found out that loving was well worth the risk. Yes, and that even in losing you win. I'm going to live. I'm going to give until there's just no more to give. I'm going to love, love till there's just no more love. I could never, never have loved the Lord. He showed And he gave when it seemed there was nothing to give. He loved when loving brought heartache and lost. He forgave from an old rugged cross. I'm going to live. I'm going to give until there's just no more to give. I'm going to love, love till there's just no more love. I could never, never have loved the Lord. Yes, thank the Lord. Ask an interest in your prayers this morning as we look into the Word of God. The title of the, that works. The, the title of the message this morning is "How Do You Love." That song that was just sung said, "I could never out love the Lord." You know, the Lord has loved us so much. He cares for all of us so much this morning. Um, it's important for our children to hear those words verbalized. It, it, it makes me feel sad when I hear people saying, I, I didn't really, I haven't really been told that my parents love me. They never really told me. It's really important for our children to hear those words, I love you. And I just want all of you to know this morning that the Lord loves you. And he demonstrated that love not because we were worthy of it. It wasn't because we were just so good, you just couldn't help but love them. It was because we were wretched and blind and human. And Jesus looked down and he loved us. And God sent his son because of his love. He sent Jesus to this earth to die on the cross that we could have peace in our hearts. Love is a gift. And Jesus gave love to us freely, without reservation. And I can never outgive or outlove the Lord this morning because He has loved me so much. In my 
mistakes and my failures. Uh, when I'm unlovable, the Lord has been faithful. He's been there. And that's one of the reasons I know the Lord loves me is because when things get tough, he doesn't run off on me. That's one of the reasons I know my wife loves me is because she's got the keys to the car and she can leave anytime she wants. You know, I told him in Africa before I said, I've, I said I'm gone, been gone for a few weeks. And I said, when I get home, I'm counting on my wife being there. I didn't tie her up, didn't chain her to the stove, but I'm counting on her being there because she loves me. She wants to be there. Love is a choice. And love is not coercion. Love is not about forcing someone to do something. Love is really something that comes from the free will. And so the burden the Lord just been talking to me about it this week and this question of how do you love? How do you love this morning? I'd like to begin over in the book of John in the 21st chapter. And you remember when after Jesus had died and rose from the dead, Peter decided to go back fishing. He decided to go back to his comfort zone pre-Christ. Do you know that's what many times happens, been walking with the Lord, and then all of a sudden there's this change, and Peter said, I'm just going to go back to where I used, what I used to be. That was where I was most comfortable. And in the love of Jesus, he came walking down, the beach, the coast line there. And in chapter 21, we'll just begin reading with verse 15. When they had dined, well, Jesus told them to come in verse 12. He said, come and dine. And, and then he, after they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, he said, Simon, son of Jonas, he said, lovest thou me more than these? Now, there is a a quandary, if you will, about who these are. Now, some have, have speculated and postulated that Jesus was looking to the fish because Peter had left and gone back fishing, okay? They, they had left, and so here Jesus says, Peter, do you love me more than these fish? Other theologians have speculated that he was actually talking about the other disciples, because it was Peter that said how much he loved God, and I will not fail you, Lord, before the crucifixion, and it was Peter that denied the Lord. And so some believe that Jesus was referring to disciples like Peter, do you love me more than them? And Peter had a little more reservation in his answer this time because it hadn't been very long back that he had failed the Lord. So Jesus said, do you love me? And he, do you love me with an agape love? Now, agape love is that love of ardent, supreme, perfect affection and desire. Peter, do you love me perfectly? And Peter's response was, he said, Yea, Lord, thou, thou knowest that I love you. Um, he didn't use the word agape here in his love. He, he was saying, Lord, you know more that I, um, I regard you. I have affection for you. There, there's an attachment there, Lord. You know that. But that wasn't enough for Jesus. You know, Peter denied Jesus how many times? Three. Take note how many times Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. Now, was that happenstance? I don't think so. So, Jesus said, feed my lambs. And he said to him again the second time, Simon, he said, lovest thou me? And he said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, then feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? In other words, I want you to really think about your love now. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I love you. I'll love you too. How many of y'all have said that headed out the door on the phone? Love you, love you too. And it's almost rote. Wait, wait, Renee, do you, do you love me? Yes, I told you. Yeah, but you didn't think a lot about it. That was just almost this rote response. Renee, do you really love me? That's what Jesus was doing. It is one thing for us to come together this morning and say, yes, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. But how do you love? 
do we really, the Lord wants us to stop and think about the measure of our love and what that really means. And so he asked the third time, and Peter was grieved, a little frustrated maybe. It's like, Lord, I told you that I love you. He said, I, I, he was grieved because he said the third time, lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, thou knowest all things. You know what? I almost don't, I may almost hesitate to even tell you, Lord, you know I love you. You know my heart this morning. I am so thankful the Lord knows our heart. But do you know that love is something that goes way beyond the words that we say from our mouth this morning? Lord, you know where I am. You know my heart. You knew I was going to betray you, and I didn't think I was. And I kind of stood up, the strong man in the group, saying, I will never deny you, Lord. And yet I did. And so now, Lord, when you ask me to examine my love, I, I express my heart, but yet you really know the reality of things. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Peter, if you really love me, I have something I want you to do. There's something I want that I want some fruit from your love. I want it to be more than just out of your mouth. But I want you to go and I want you to feed my sheep. We heard this morning about winning souls. I want you to go and encourage people. I want you to go and comfort them. I want you to go and share with others this love that I have for you. I want you to go and feed someone else with that same love if you really do love me. Well, it's one thing for us to profess love and something else to show it. Have you ever had someone tell you they loved you and then their actions did not really demonstrate that? And it kind of almost made me want to say, you, you say you love me, but what does that mean? Do you know all of us show love in a little bit different way? Um, and this is not necessarily from the scripture. I know there's an author that a lot of people talk about the five love languages, right? People speak and they show their love in different ways. Now, if I miss one, help me out. One of those ways that people is, is by touch. You know, there's something that communicates love and affection and commitment. There's nothing that does that for some people than just going and give them a hug and just that physical contact. That is a love language, right? Well, another one is, is giving of gifts. That people feel loved when they get gifts. That's not my love language. Um, but when they get gifts, want some, it's acts of service. Let me do something for you. That's how they communicate their love. Another one is words of affirmation. That verification that, yes, Jesus, I love you. You know, that's why it's good to verbalize. And then quality time. I'm not so busy, but because I, I'm busy, but because I love you, I'm going to spend time with you. And all of us are stronger in those areas. But you know, it's interesting that my wife and I took a little one of those little quiz things that tells you what your love language is. And you know, we had some commonalities and there is one area, some that are a little bit different. Do you know, if I tell my wife, I say, I love you. And she said, but how do you love me? Do I want to love her the way I choose to love? Or do I want to love her the way she needs to be loved? Now that makes us think a little bit more than just saying I love you, doesn't it? Because there are some things that some people don't, you can tell me you love me all day long, but if you don't spend time with me, then I might question your love because it's a different love language, or you may come and spend time with me, but if you don't give me those words of affirmation and express it, I might wonder, Rent, do you love me? Well, yes, I just spent two hours with you. I know, but do you love me? I gave you flowers, but I know, but do you love me? <laughs> do you see that it's important then in relationships even to know how someone else needs to be loved? See? And Jesus saying, Peter, if you love me, this is how you can show me that you love me. I want you to go and I want you to feed my sheep. And by that, I will know that you really love me because that's my love language. Go feed my sheep. I want you to go tell others about my love and I'm going to know that you love me. Well, Jesus said over in Matthew 15, he said, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth 
and they honor me with their lips. He said that their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, there can be a form of religion. We can have doctrines and we can have standards. And are those things important? They are important. Do you realize that doctrines of the Bible, we're not talking about commandments of men now, but the doctrines of the Bible give a shell, it gives the structure to the life that God wants us to have. But what puts the spirit in it is the what motivates, and that's love. The reason why we should live like we do, the reason why I can bring flowers to my wife, but is that always an expression of love? I've shared this example before, but when we first got married, there was a man that didn't treat his wife real well, okay? And so he would act up to her, then he'd go get her flowers. But he wouldn't apologize. He wouldn't humble his heart and say, you know what, I'm sorry I'm treating you this way. But he'd go get her flowers. Renee's comment to me was, and I agree with her, she's like, save the flowers. I mean, don't waste the money. You know what I mean? It would be better if you want to bring flowers. That's wonderful. But come with an humble heart and say, I'm sorry how I treated you. And I just want to give you this gift. And I, I want you to know that I'm really sorry. So flowers by themselves don't do it. Right. Well, so we can say we love God this morning. But do you know it's our actions that really show that love? That's how... See, it's really hard when you start trying to define what love is. Because love is more than action. Love is commitment. Love is commitment. You know, when I, and this is no disparagement on my wife or our marriage relationship, I think all of you can know what I mean. You don't wake up every morning and just oh, can't hardly contain it. It's like she's still here and this emotion just boiling over. It's all, oh. you know, th those times are there. They're good times, right? Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's not always that way, but it doesn't lessen our love. I know my wife loves me because she's still there. I know she loves me because she's still interested in sacrificing for me. She knows I love her because I want to put her welfare above my own. Where do we learn that? From Christ. Because God is love. And when I struggle with maybe expressing how do I love, and sometimes maybe we might start feeling like we don't love very good. Let's go back to our example of love. For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only that he begotten. gave his only begotten son. It was at his own sacrifice. It was sacrifice that God gave that which was most precious to him. And he gave that as a sacrifice for us. Is not that love? Love is when it's not, I'm going to love you like I want to be loved. But I'm going to love you and I'm going to do for you what you need that you can be better off. I want you to be happy. So I may not feel like going to the grocery store, tired, been working all day, mentally exhausted, and we need something at the store. And if my wife's tired too, and her feet are hurting her, honey, let, uh, let me go get that for you. Let me, let me go do that. Why? Because we learn that that's what God did for us. So this is a way I can show love to my wife is it's not about what feels good to me. It's about how I can be of service to her. And that accompanied with the words of I love you, I'll tell you what, brethren. You want a little spark in your marriage. It's not always going to come from the flowers. It's going to come from acts of service. It's going to come from being there. I could have gone and done this, but you want to go to the park? Let's take time and go do that together. How do you love this morning? Well, God showed us the example, and he endured hardship. He went through suffering, and it wasn't coerced. He did it voluntarily. Oh, okay, I'll go to the store if you really want me to. I'll just rather just go myself. Have y'all ever felt that way about something? You ask your children to do something and, uh, first of all, that uh, needs to be addressed with our children. Now with a husband or wife, we need to address that our own self if you feel that way. But the thing about it is true love 
is about, yes, I want to do that. Not because I feel like it. Feeling and wanting is two different things, right? I don't feel like it, but I want to because I love you. That's what the Lord does for us all the time. I can't outlove the Lord. And the Lord's saying, Michael, do you love me? Of course I love you, Lord. No, wait, wait a minute. Michael, do you really love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. It's not out of coercion. Um, I try to just put it on the table real clearly sometimes. I'm going to do it again this morning. We can have all the doctrines and good standards that, that we've been blessed with having. But those things don't motivate we can do those things without love, folks. We can do those things without love. What the Lord is looking for this morning is not just an act or a deed. He, love is a decision. Love is a consecration. When I married my wife, I said forsaking all others. See, So the decision's over now. I made a decision. So if things get a little bit, anybody been married? We've been married 29 years. And in that 29 years, I can't say that there's never been a time that there wants a little bit of tension. And are you going to exactly just ruin anybody's picture of what marriage is about? But do you know what? In times of misunderstanding or difference, the love should be no less. I'm here. We'll work through this. I don't understand, but we're going to work through this because I'm committed. That's what the Lord has done for us. Folks, he's committed to us this morning. He died for us. You think when we go through struggles, the Lord's going to walk away from us? He died for us. And there's a, I think it's a Chinese saying, but when you, when you give your life or you save someone's life, you have responsibility to them then. You see them hungering and you just gave, you just spared their life. There's responsibility to go help them. The Lord Jesus has a vested interest in us. He wants that same kind of love back. He wants us to be motivated to do what the Bible says because of a choice in here down deep. That Lord, I choose you and I'm committed to you. Lord, what's your love language? It's not just about what pleases me. The Lord gave us this, and we're taught this. We won't take the time to read it. In Ephesians chapter 5, the scripture is given to tell us as husbands how to love our wives, right? How are we supposed to love our wives? As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, right? So the Lord was telling us as husbands, this is how I want you to love your wife. It's not selfish, it's not proud, it's not self-seeking, but I want you to love your wife. Yes, you're the head of the home, but what does that mean? Christ is the head of the church. Let's set the example of love. Sacrifice for her. Give of yourself for her. Put her well-being above your own. That goes way beyond what words do. Because it's one thing for me to tell my wife I love her, but it's something else to give of myself to where it hurts. Brethren, how are we doing? How are we loving our wives? Christ gave to the point of suffering. And I believe the Lord has called us as husbands to do the same thing. But it is in our relationships with one another. How, how do we love? Is it just with this? Or do we love by these other avenues of demonstrating that real sacrifice and consecration? Because he said so men ought to love their wives um, even as their own bodies. No man yet hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it. So love is more than, oh, here's some flowers. I'm, I'm, I got to run. I'll see you, you know, and then you coexist in the same home. You can live in the same house, but there's no bond. There's no words of affection. There's no quality time. There's no sacrifices. There's no self-denial. It's like it's all about me. And yet, I express one thing by a flower or by a word. No, it's more than that. Love is about nourishing, nourish, nourishing and cherishing 
That's what the Lord has done for us. When we get sick, he's there. When I was sick, Renee was like going in and getting me something. I wasn't feeling well. and She's like, here, let me get that. She could hardly walk. And I'm like, I'll get it. And she's like, no, I'll do it. And we're, you know, but that's what, when you love one another, you're willing to suffer a little bit. So then the argument comes about, no, I'll do it. No, I'll do it. No, I'll do it. No, you understand. But with love, do you know that the Lord wants us to be sacrificed? Because that's what he did for us. So, if you don't mind a little self-introspection this morning, um, how are you loving? Peter, do you love me? Um, Not an absent love. Loving from a distance. That is something that has troubles me. People that say they love and it's from a distance. I know geographical distance is one thing. You understand. But it's like, yeah, I love you. Well, if you really love me, then that should bring about a bond. That's what Christ's love did for me. It won me. His love drew me. And it was something that I want to embrace that love back because he followed hard after me. I've heard of some men, they, they, um, they found a woman they gave their affections to. And you said they chased them, but they won them. It's like maybe the, maybe the young lady wasn't real interested to start with. But because that young man persevered in showing his love and devotion, he won her heart. The Lord has won my heart this morning. And I want to turn around and say, Lord, I do love you. And Lord say, Michael, how do you love me? I want to start examining how I love the Lord. Sacrifice. Quality time. Words. What we do, um, you know, love can grow cold, and that's a, there's a whole nother message in that. But that's where love can grow cold, can't it? To the church, um, it did in Revelation, in in Ephesus, they left their first love. Laodicea, they grew cold and lukewarm. And um, the Lord, sometimes we need to come back and just reexamine our love. You say, what do you mean by love? Our devotion, our commitment, what we actually mean by that love. You know, I believe sometimes we realize we're not loving perfectly. And I want to come back and start thinking about how my Lord has loved me and say, Lord, help would you perfect my love. Help me to love you more, Lord. And um, Jesus said over in John 14, verse 23, if a man loved me. Now, Jesus was teaching how to love here, okay? He said, if a man love me, he will what? Keep my commandments. There's one one place that says keep my commandments. The one in John 14 says he will keep my words. Okay, here we go now. Now I have to do something. Well, if we love, then there's going to be fruit of that love. But if there's no fruit, then it becomes just like the people Jesus talked about. They said it with their mouth, but it wasn't in their heart. Um, the Lord is not wanting to whip any of us into shape. All right? He's not wanting to force any of us. But the Lord wants us to know that he loves us. And the Lord's looking for our love back. And the Lord said, I just do, I do want you to know that if you really love me, you're going to be interested in pleasing me. And this is what pleases me. So we've shared before and talking this week with someone You know, when you go into someone's house, some people wear their shoes in the house, right? Some people don't. Once we replaced our carpet a year or so ago, we started taking our shoes off. If you come to my house, I'm not going to ask you to take your shoes off, all right? But if you're observant, you're going to notice something. Now now you all know, right? (laughs) I, I really didn't have ulterior motives here. But if you will notice, there's a line of shoes in the hallway. Now, in Canada, in Germany... That's just a given. You go to those countries, you take your shoes off. But a lot of people here don't. And we didn't used to. Renee and I were somewhere recently, and we walk in the house and sit down. I look down, all of a sudden, it's like, Renee, our shoes are on. And they don't wear shoes in their house. And I felt bad about it, but do you know what? It was in ignorance. I hadn't thought about it. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. 
But when I recognize it, it was their home and I want to follow their guidelines. I want to do what pleases them. If you wear shoes in your house, wear shoes in your house. And guess what? If I come to your house and I look down and you're wearing shoes, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep my shoes on. <laughs> but the point is, our desire should be to please the Lord. So Lord, want me to wear my shoes today or are you taking them off? How can we love the Lord? So if the Lord has told us something in his word that maybe it's not my personal preference, maybe it's not, it's like I really don't want to do that, but the Lord says this is what pleases me. Isn't that not our goal to please the Lord this morning? Because he loved us and I want to show love to him. So it's going to come at a sacrifice. Do you know sacrifice comes when you give up your way for the benefit of someone else? So there are some things that the Bible teaches us that don't come naturally to us. There are some things the Lord asks us to do in the New Testament that my personal preference would probably be to do a little bit differently. Personally in the flesh, you understand? But I love the Lord. And so I want to say, Lord, how do you want me to love you? And he said, this is how you can show your love to me. But Lord, I don't really get it. I don't get why everybody does. But you know what? If coming up and giving my wife for a hug for 20 seconds means more than 10 seconds, then I'll count 20 Mississippi. <laughs> I, yesterday I came up or a couple days ago, I was like one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You know, because they say that you need a hug of a woman. What does it need to hug for 20 seconds? A day, there's one of those little things out there. So when I start counting real fast, it's turned into a little joke with us. But one, two, three, four, five, six. But really, the point is this that if we know this is how we can express our love to our Savior, Lord, help me to do it. I fall short sometimes. But Lord, this is my heart. And when you say, Michael, do you love me? I want to say, Lord, I do. But I want to learn how to love you more. Because sometimes my love hasn't been perfect. Um, and this is the motivation. All right. Lest anyone here ever question. We can talk about what churches have done. And what ministers preach. And what our perceptions are of one another. Okay. But I just want to say it like it is this morning. We're not forced to do anything. We can live how we want to live. We can go where we want to go. We can do what we want to do. And God has given us those personal choices. Because what motivates us, what should motivate us that has any merit, the only sacrifice that has merit is what's motivated by love. I can give my body to be burned, but if it's not motivated by charity, it profiteth me nothing. I can speak eloquently. I can give all of my goods to the poor. But if it's not motivated by something in here, those things, I, I, as Brother Cook said, used to say, I'm not going to get any stars in my crown because of it. So if anybody, if you ever start wondering, well, this here and I have to do this and I can't do that in the church this and church that, may I just put it on the table and say, y'all can do whatever you want this morning. Is that fair? But what it comes down to is, in my life, the Lord has loved me. And he gave himself. And the Lord's saying, Michael, how, how are you loving me? Do you love me? How are you showing that love? And I want to please the Lord with my life. Um, my little children, quoting 1 John three eighteen, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Loving God first above comfort, position, education, money. That song said, I cannot outlove the Lord. How much can we give? How much can we do? How much time? I can't put a measure on that because the Lord has loved us so much. How do you love? Amen. Amen. Maybe we could stand. First and last verse. First and last verse of 264.